fun. Elaine, thank you so much for joining us today uh, for our, our video interview series. Uh, for our network, uh, Elaine Coulthard is a, a fitness industry consultant uh, who has worked at the head of the national level for some amazing companies, including DW Fitness, JJB, and LA Fitness. And these days, Elaine runs a very successful fitness consultancy business and supports some amazing companies up and down uh, the country in coping with all issues and these days probably more COVID related issues as, as, as well. So firstly, Elaine, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Abby. It's good to be here. Thanks for asking me. No worries in the slightest. So we've, as you know, we've, we've got some questions for, for Elaine today. And the aim of this video is very much to provide value to our network, especially regional managers, general managers, and club owners uh, who are facing different times, difficult times these days as well. So we've got five questions for Elaine. And without any further ado, let's, let's get started. So Elaine, the first question we have for you today is, how have you and, and your clients adapted during, during COVID times? Well, one reason I love the fitness industry is because we are so adaptable and everything that we do, we just take it on the chin. We're pretty gruer, aren't we, in the fitness industry? And I've been really impressed by, not just by my clients, but all the people I speak to, how we've, we've just got on with it. You have to get on with it. It is what it is. And I know lots of people have said that. But if you think what an impact that's had on our culture yeah. for a start and our finance in particular and all the clubs I deal with they've all risen to the challenge and fair play to them I think it's easy to forget what role the directors and the owners have had in this I think the stress of being an owner must be well I know it's it's pretty hard and what I've tried to do with my clubs is support them, support them using what UK Active are trying to do, which I think is a tremendous job. And if you think what we've had to do over the, it seems like, what, March, how long ago was that? We've had to close the clubs. We've had to cope with furlough, which I've helped people with. Well, you need a degree in furlough before you even start. Um, cash flow changes daily we never know what we're going to take in what we're going to do we've had to reduce costs and they've coped well with that a lot of the gms have coped really well with that we spent hours negotiating towels when we don't want any towels or waste management um, and then there's the health and safety which kind of changes every day as well um, but you know, we've had to make sure for lots and lots of reasons that everything is immaculate and in place and people have got the confidence. And I will talk about that till the cows come home, how important that is. Um, online, you know, we've embraced online and very early on, I was so proud of my presenter friends in the industry who just said, right, well, if I can't go to a club, I'm doing it online. And people have taught themselves. Who knew Zoom? I'm an expert in Zoom. Who knew, you know? And the people that have embraced that have done really well. Yeah. Um, and, a, and a lot of my clients have done well with that. I, I think for me personally, I mean, I, I did training on Zoom. My biggest amount of people, I, think I had 30 people training on Zoom. Now I thrive off audience participation and that's a whole new skill when you've got little tiny people that you're, aiming at um you know it's been it's been interesting but now we're back we had a bit of a hesitant start i think because we were all ready to come back at the beginning of july and then then we actually came back on the 24th so we've had to not only embrace the new culture the temperature checks as they were and now we've got uh, the qr code etc but we've had to really try to encourage our members back and give them that confidence and fair play to my clients because they've worked their little socks off to try and do that. Yeah. Um, sales are doing really well. I'm really happy with the, with the way we're selling, uh, but it, it's, it's really trying to get everybody back. And, and my, I'm lucky in that the majority of my clients are a hybrid of 
majority residential and a small amount of corporate. And I have to say, I feel really for the people who are corporate only and the, yeah. you know, the city centre clubs. I think probably a reflection of the time, and, and you've had you've dealt with me in this, Abby, is that um, I had to appoint a new club director for one of my clients. And thanks to your video supplies, I, I chose uh, one to interview. I interviewed him appointed him, I've trained him, and I manage him every day as a club director, and I've never met him. I've never stood next to him, and that's the sign of the times, but we can do it, we can do it. So yeah. fair play to the fitness industry, you know, throw it at us and we'll keep on coming back. Absolutely, yeah, I think it almost feels as if we've adapted about five, between five to 10 years of change within five to six months, haven't we? Uh, yeah. In terms of the amount of things that you've just mentioned there, we, it normally takes over five years for this level of change to actually come through. And yeah, fair play to the fitness industry for just going, yeah. we have to adapt, we have to adapt now. And we've just gone out and done it, haven't we? Which is, which is, which is amazing. So yeah, that, perfect. Yeah. So I guess, just moving on from that, I guess, you know, clubs have obviously opened up. Are there any interesting trends you have seen since the reopening? Is there anything you're seeing that has surprised you or any interesting trends that you want to share, share with us today? I think what we've noticed is that members are spreading their bets, if you like, that it, it's a bit like when you're working from home, it's great but actually you want to go to the office maybe one or two days a week. And I think fitness at the moment, as we stand now, people are happy to go to a club. Well, the ones that are happy to go to a club are happy to go to a club, but they also can work and do their workouts at home. So we've got this hybrid model moving forward. Those clubs that have embraced the digital age uh, using that hybrid model of thriving. Um, and I've done that with one particular client. But I think that is, for me, that's, that's what's going to happen, certainly over the next six months. That people will go to club because they do want that socialisation, but also they will look at the, the digital side of it as well. And I think, again, we've had to embrace that. Absolutely. Um, It'll be very interesting to see what happens now that the weather's getting worse. You yeah. know, people have been working, running, and Boris has told us to get on our bikes and all of that. Well, that's all very well. But when it's minus two in London and it's raining, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, the challenge, I think, for, for all of us will be stuff like Apple Fitness Plus and Sky Fit and we have to go with that. We have to have the same offering as them, but encourage people to come into club. You'll never get better interaction than you will with, in the club. Yeah. Um, so the trend, is it a trend or is it a reaction to current times? Yeah. I, I don't think it's a trend. I hope it's not a trend. I think that we just have to go with it. Yeah, absolutely. And also I think... You raised such a good point there, is that technology is obviously brilliant, and we wouldn't be doing this without technology right now, you know, speaking today. But I think it almost is like a lot of clubs that we're noticing as well, they just are upping their games in terms of the customer experience, because if someone's coming to your club now, there almost has to be that differentiating factor, doesn't it? Uh, otherwise, yeah. people will stay online and they go, Right, let me just train online. Let me just do that. Whereas that good club experience will is you can't put a, a, a number of value to that, can you? So no, no. Okay. okay. Moving on from that, obviously there's no playbook. At least uh, there's no playbook I know of uh, in terms of how to manage a gym health club in COVID nineteen. What advice would you give all those general managers right now? You know, out there, what kind of key advice would you give them? Well. Do you know what? Being a GM, I think, is the toughest role in the industry with a, by a country mile. You have to have so many 
so many different skills to be a, a good GM. Um, not least communication. And it's really important at the moment to communicate with your members, to give them that confidence, you know, from the outset, from the absolute outset, let's get them into the club and let's talk to them. So I like to have a GM who spends a good deal of time on the gym floor. I don't want to see a GM and I'd like to ask every member, what's the name of your GM? And I expect them to tell me so, because they've met them. And I don't care if you've got 7,000 members or 700, you know, you can still be out there and be the face of the club. Um, I think it's so important for a GM to manage the COVID protocols. And we started really, really well yeah. in July. Are we slipping a little bit? Are we, are we still making sure that everybody's cleaning all their equipment? That's important. And it's important for to GMs to make sure their staff and they have the staff buy in for that. Keeping that confidence level with members is beyond important. Um, I also think that I've never liked managing GMs blind. I want GMs to manage by their P&L. And never has it been more important to manage those costs, yeah. that controllable contribution um, costs and to increase the revenue. And I know it goes without saying, but they need to keep their eye on the prize. And now the prize has changed. The prize now is to keep your club solvent. Let it wash its face. We'll talk about profit a little bit later in the year, but let's let it wash its face. So are you watching your costs? Are you managing your staff to get the maximum revenue? Are you bringing your sales in? But more importantly, are you dealing with retention of the current members? Wow. So uh, as a GM, good luck, mate, because you've got a lot to do. But get your staff right. Yep. You're only as good as your weakest link. Make sure that you haven't got any weak links. That's my biggest advice to GMs. And, and I would say if anyone, if you said, if you do survive this, I think you can survive anything. And that could be on your, on your CV, on your own personal mantle that survived 20 I survived COVID. <laughs> You're exactly. right. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's for all of us, to be honest, that, that is, you know, you survive this, I think you can survive absolutely anything. Getting a bit more specific on that, what three things should all GM, all gyms, I guess, gyms, health clubs, be doing right now to give them the best chance of success? What three things would you say that, listen, if on the top, you know, these are three things that all gyms, all health clubs have to be doing or should be doing for the best chance for success? I've never wavered on this from the day I started in the industry and people will laugh when I say it, but what I believe in hasn't changed just because of COVID. I believe that when a member comes into a club, it's all about retention. You know, I was national retention manager at one point for LA Fitness. And at the time, you know, we were doing sales. We were opening a club a month. It was fantastic. But we need to retain those people even more now. Yeah. So three key elements. And if anybody else out there says this was their idea, they're wrong. I, I made this up years ago. First of all, you have to have fun. I know times are tough. It's even more important when they come to us that we're professional, we're slick, but we have a laugh. Have a laugh with your staff. Have a laugh with your members. Know your members. Get into group exercise. Get them in there and have a laugh with them. So fun, number one. Mm -hmm. The second thing is I think the industry makes a big mistake on focusing on the fit the young the fit yeah they're, they're the bread and butter of our, our money but there's an awful lot of people out there who probably now a little bit hesitant about coming back but let's make them all be able to achieve something at that their level now i always used to talk about mrs jones uh, mrs jones never exercised before a little bit worried because when she walks up the stairs, she's exhausted. She can't breathe. So her achievement would be to come to the club 
to do a workout and to end up being able to walk up the stairs without yeah. stopping. That's just as important as wearing a heart rate monitor and working at X percentage capacity. And I think sometimes the industry lose sight, loses sight sorry, of who we can reach out to. So make sure, so my second thing really, is to make sure we're embracing everybody to achieve what they can, not just the fit, in inverted commas. Yes. And my third thing is that idea of community. You have to keep on promoting the culture of community. Use people's names. Make sure that you find out about them. That's the power of group exercise. You know, if you're a good instructor, people will come to your classes for 15, 20 years. They'll still be there. They'd have been online doing your class during lockdown, and now they're back in the club doing your class. And group exercise can teach the fitness industry a huge amount because group exercise retains people. And so if, if people feel they belong and you walk in a club and you go, hi, Abby, how are you today? What did you do last week? Where were you? They feel like they belong. And if we belong somewhere, we'll stay there. So those three things, fit, fun, achieve, belong, fab, they're my three key elements. That's never changed since the 43 years ago when I entered the fitness industry. But I would add three little letters afterwards, okay. and you can work out what the word spells in, in your own time, Abby. I'd, I would add R, I, and C, ridiculously, incessantly clean. That is, that, that's great. That really is great. And I obviously, well, as you've said it first on the love recruitment thing, uh, or the love recruitment interview series, the whole fab concept is yours. So, you know, there's, <laughs> if, if anyone argues with that, you know, we, we've got this on Copyright. Right. Oh, we've copyright <laughs> as well. We get the lawyers on it straight away. Len, thank you thank so you. much. That is, that, that, that is brilliant. Thank you uh, uh, for that. Uh, final thing. What is your outlook? for the industry, where do you think we're gonna be in 12 months time? I know it's a really hard question, but you've seen a lot of changes come through. I know no one's seen a global pandemic, but where do you see, from where you're sitting right now, where do you see the industry in 12, 12 months time? I think we have to get through to 12 months. Okay. Uh, I think the next 12 months are gonna be even more challenging than they have been for the last six months. Um, members' priorities have changed. Um, they are now looking for confidence and for trust in where they're going yeah. because you make a decision, don't you? Well, most of us make a decision about risk. So I think the trust and confidence in a club will be more important than the price mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, but what it's actually doing, it's making us leaner. It's making us better. We've certainly got higher standards yeah. of cleanliness, which can't be a bad thing. Um, I think we probably need two years to recover. I think in 12 months, it's probably too soon to say, where will we be? We'll still be surviving. Mm -hmm. And I'm not being pessimistic. I'm probably trying to be a little bit more realistic. We will still be surviving this whole thing. Um, both inside the clubs and out. Um, I'll give an example, actually, Abby. I work, as you know, I work with a number of bouldering companies. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even know what bouldering was, but I do now. And, you know, Google it if you don't. Um, and I heard a very interesting story the other day about a guy who ran pretty much the most successful bouldering company in the UK, he was making a fortune, he was rammed, waiting lists, etc. And after when we went into lockdown, he posted regularly on social media about what a conspiracy it was. There was nothing to COVID, it was no worse than the flu. And that sounds familiar, doesn't it? But he continued to do this. When we reopened, and you know, I helped reopen a couple of bouldering sites. 
with exactly the same as we did in the fin fitness industry, the, the COVID protocol. He refused to put any COVID protocol in. He is now in danger of going into liquidation because nobody will go. And I think there's a lesson to be learned there that in the next 12 months, it's not going to be the survival of the fittest. It's going to be the survival of the smartest, mm -hmm. the people that can adapt and embrace the change and give members what they want. Yeah. And that's I, that will be happening. In, that's what's going to happen over the next 12 months, I think. Amazing. Len, what I take from that is I think we, if, if businesses, including our own and including I guess yours as well, don't realize the difference that in six months time, people's requirements have changed. Mm -hmm. and, and the businesses that stick to what we were in March 2020 will struggle, whereas the, the new the people have changed in six months. Uh, yeah. And people's requirements, at least for the present, have changed, haven't they? Uh, yeah. And that, yeah, you know, we need, all need to adapt to, to be able to survive. Uh, uh, for that as well. So, Elaine, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, I'm sure our network will absolutely love uh, hearing your views on all, all these things uh, uh, as well. If there are any questions from the network, we uh, would obviously forward it on to you uh, uh, straight of away. Of course. Uh, and we'll get you. Call me. Absolutely. Rather than email, I'll always just call you, as you know. So, uh, um, thank you. I would like to take this opportunity of saying, Thank you to everybody in the industry for reacting the way you have. You know, a lot of my good friends run a lot of companies and they've been magnificent and it must be so stressful. So congratulations to everybody. And let's keep going. We're going to do this. We'll be fine because we're grr. We can do it. Exactly. And, we, and we're fab, as you said. Uh, we well. are fab. Yeah. Did you, You've got to work out what that other word is now, fab. Rick, and then you Rick. add fabric. Exactly, I got it. Uh, perfect. Well, Elaine, thank you I'm so up much. In the world. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Pleasure, Abby. And it's always good to see you. And thank you for your support with my company as well. Thank you. No, isn't the stuff just.